a blessed and happy Chinese New Year to one and all, as well as brothers and sisters who are online uh, right now on uh, YouTube. In this Chinese New Year, the year of the tiger, I also wish you a Chinese saying, Hu Hu Shen Wei, may you be, may you forge ahead with the vigor and the vitality of the tiger. But as Christians, how do we live out this vitality as well as vigor in our life? Who is our tiger for this year? And therefore, we will reflect upon Psalms 91. But uh, let me tell you a Chinese story, a tale. One bright day, a clever old fox, he was feeling hungry. And so he decided to go out into the wild to catch some small animals to eat. Uh, while he was walking down a path, suddenly a large animal pounded on him from behind. The animal bares its teeth and took out its claws and ready to just eat him up. And then he just puffed his chest and he turned around and says, Wait, tiger, Mr. Tiger, wait, you cannot eat me. And because I was sent to earth by the heavens to rule all the animals in this animal kingdom, if you eat me, you will surely be punished by the heavens. The tiger was looking at him and says, you are really sent from the heavens? Prove it to me. And so the fox proudly proclaimed, and he says this to the tiger, yes, if you don't believe me, okay, then we will take a walk in the woods. Um, you will walk behind me, and I will walk in front. And when, as we walk into the woods, you will observe all the small animals fleeing away. And so the tiger says, okay. So the two of them, the tiger and the fox, walked and walked into the woods. And the tiger saw that as they were walking, the small animals saw the fox and ran away. And so the tiger says, wow, this is amazing. He is indeed the king of the animal kingdom. And so the tiger thought that the fox was telling the truth and that the fox was really sent from heaven. This is a Chinese saying. I try to read in Chinese. Hu jia, hu wei. This English equivalent is the fox borrows the tiger's might. In this story, if you look at the picture, the fox dwells under the shadow of the tiger's might. All the animals, large and small, were all afraid of him because he was with the tiger. The fox obtained the might of the tiger because he is found in the tiger's shadow. Wherever the tiger walks, he will be there. And so, our Lord, the Lion of Judah, he welcomes us to dwell in his secret place, to abide under his shadow, he is the lion whom we can find our refuge and our fortress. This year of the tiger, it is my prayer that we will dwell in the secret place of our Lord. Psalms 91 is a psalm of trust. And I've entitled my sermon as Dwell in the Secret Place of the Most High God. I hope that today's psalm will remind us to dwell in that secret 
place, that secret place of the Most High God. That in the year of the tiger, we will abide in His shadow and trust Him. After finding Christ as our refuge and our fortress, that we will also go out and draw others into this refuge and fortress. May we possess the spirit of the tiger. In fact, may we possess the spirit of the lion of Judah in us, the spirit of alertness, strength, energy that will dwell in us because we dwell in the secret place of our most high God who is in Christ. And so, Psalms 91 is special to us and especially to me and my family because during the 2015 Nepal earthquake, my family together with the Nepali congregation that stayed with us in the tents, as you can see, um, we memorized this, this Psalm 91 every night. The tents were our dwelling place for about four weeks. Let's look into the psalm. psalm. This psalm opens with the declaration of the state of the godly. In verse 1 and verse 2, it tells us of the condition of those who are found in God. Let's look at verse 1. It says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. The blessings here found in Psalms 91 are not for all believers, but for those who are living in close fellowship with God. The scripture says, he who dwells is like the one who pitched his tent and find rest. He is the one who resides in that secret place of the Most High God. So what is that secret place of the Most High? In ancient days, in the Old Testament, it is the Holy of Holies that is found in the temple. In the Old Testament, only the high priest is allowed to enter into that secret place annually, once a year, during the Year of Atonement. However, for us, it is through the blood of Christ that is shed upon that cross that we now have the confidence to enter the most holy place to have that communion with God. When Christ died on the cross, the curtain of the temple was rent apart. However, while every child of God looks towards that secret place, yet not all dwell in that secret place, the most holy place of God. They run to it at times and enjoy occasional communion but many believers do not habitually reside in the Lord's mysterious presence. Dear brothers and sisters, only those who continuously dwell with God in communion, those who abide in Christ and Christ in them, will become the possessors of these rare and special benefits that is found within this psalm. Those who dwell in the secret place are they that know the love of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And they are the ones who say to live is Christ. They are the ones who spend in daily communion looking toward the face of their Master, their Saviour, their Lord and their King. They shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The Almighty, the all-powerful Lord, shall shield all those who dwell within Him. They shall remain under His care. They shall be under His protection. When there is a shadow, there is a being. So the Almighty Himself is where his shadow is. And hence, those who dwell in his secret place are shielded by God himself. They are safe. No evil will reach them. 
communion with God is safety. The, most, the more closely we link with our Almighty God, the more confident we may be. So this year of the tiger, would you dwell and abide in that secret place of the Most High God that you would commune with Him daily, every day in this year? Let's look at verse 2. It says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. The psalmist can make a general statement by saying the Lord is a refuge and a fortress. But he made a personal statement instead by saying that he is my refuge. He is my fortress. And he said it boldly again. He says it with, I will say. With such bold declaration, he honours God and leads others to seek the same confidence in God. The psalmist is able to say, He is my refuge, He is my fortress. It is because He has a personal experience with this God. He has a personal experience with God in His life. How about us? Do we have a personal experience with this God who is the Lion of Judah? The psalmist is secured in the Lord. Even in the hour of danger and in the hour of fear, he rejoices in his position because his position is sure. Because the Lord, he is his fortress as well as his refuge. As if it is not enough to call the Lord his refuge and his fortress, he adds another phrase, my God, in Him I will trust. The psalmist calls out, my God, because it means all. In fact, more than all, the Lord is the one whom He places His trust in. He who dwells in this fortress, okay, he who dwells in a fortress that cannot be penetrated would naturally trust in it. And shall not he who dwells in God feel himself safe in the arms of the Most High? We have trusted in God, so let us continue to trust in Him. He has never failed us. Why then should we suspect Him? The Scripture says, even when we are unfaithful, God is faithful because he cannot deny himself. To trust in men is natural to the human nature, and to trust in God should be natural to that spiritual nature that is inside us, where there is every reason that warrant us to exercise faith, we ought to place our confidence without hesitant without wavering, my dear friends, pray for this grace to say, in Him will I trust. Verse 3 to verse 13. It states very clearly of the blessings given to those who dwell in the Most High God. Verse 3 begins with the word surely. Surely defines, it, it is definite, and it's an emphasis that God will certainly do what He promised in the Scripture. Surely, He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall trust. God does not remove the trouble from us, but in the midst of our trouble, He will deliver and protect us. Here we are like little chicks, trusting the protection from the wings of our God. In verse 4, His truth shall be your shield and buckler. God's truth, His character, His works, 
that you see in the pages of the scripture that you would read every day shall be your shield. His truth shall protect us. This is also the picture of a warrior where he holds up the shield and he has a buckler. He shall stand in the heat of battle and shall not fear. Verse 5 to verse 6, those who trust in God shall not be afraid of terror. Arrows that shoot us, pestilence that stalk, nor destruction. At any time of the day, be it at daytime, at night, in the day, in darkness, nor at noon. And verse 7 to verse 8, Hum shall not come near those who put their trust in God. In a battlefield, this warrior shall not fear nor be defeated because his God is with him. Now, we will skip verse 9, but we will move on to verse 10. If you notice that verse 9 is central to 3 to 8 and then 10 to 13, we will come back to this very important verse. But let's look at verse 10. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. This is a counter image of the personified demon that you see in verse 5 to verse 6, where they stalk at night. These verses promise that God will command His angels to protect those who dwell in Him. Not one guardian angel, but you look at the word, angels. The whole battalion, in fact, the whole garrison of angels shall be our bodyguard to guard our body, our soul, and our spirit. Therefore, no evil shall befall on those who dwell in the Most High God. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and serpent you shall trample underfoot. As a result of this angelic protection, the warrior is able to subjugate, according to verse 13, deadly lions and snakes. He is able to tread upon the lions and cobra. Why? Because he is with the Most High God, the Lion of Judah. He is found within the shadow of God's wing. There is not only protection, but victory as well. If you recall, in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, after Jesus sent out the 70 disciples and they returned from their mission, out preaching the word of God, healing and casting out demons, this is what the Lord says. In essence, He promises verse, 12 to, verse 10 to 12 to them. He said this, from the scripture. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall be, it shall by any means hurt you. But what is the reason for such great privilege? We go back to the central verse in this small little section, verse 9. The reason is because, if you see it, because, because you have made the Lord who is your refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. Again, the psalmist stated very clearly that because you have made the Lord, the Most High God, 
your refuge and your dwelling place. It is a conscious act by the believer who made the Lord his refuge and his dwelling place. And because of that, no evil shall befall nor come near your dwelling. This blessings, this ties the two blessings that is above and below verse 9. It ties in, and that is the reason. Because you have made the Lord, your God, my refuge, and even the Most High, your dwelling place. Let's look at what God has to say. Verse 14. This psalm's climax at verse 14 through to 16. These are the words of God Himself speaking. This is God's commitment to those who dwell in Him. Not only the angels of God shall protect you, the God of angels Himself shall come to protect you and deliver you. He said, with seven, I will, and with a non-verbal clause that is in between. Let's look at the scripture. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life, I will satisfy and will show him my salvation. Look at the central part of this verse that is highlighted in yellow. The seven I wills are there and see the middle part? God says, I will be with him in times of trouble. God does not remove troubles. God does not remove our danger. The prosperity that we have is not in our talents, is not in all our possessions. The prosperity that we have is that we have this God, God who is with us in times of trouble. He is God with us. You remember the name of Christ? Emmanuel, God is with us. In these verses, God also states the reason why He's committed to such a person. It is found in the beginning of what He has said. Let's look at the slide. God's protection is with those who has an intimate, personal relationship with Him. It begins with, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. The two words, the, the word love denotes an intense and passionate attraction for someone. And the word know expresses an intimate relationship. So, do you have that love and that intimate relationship with Christ to love Him and to know Him? So, what does the psalm mean? What does this psalm mean to us, for those of us who is in Christ? Our Lord Jesus, the Lion of Judah, He says to us, Abide in me and I in you. He desires that we abide within His shadow. The body of Christ was broken for us so that He will bring us to the Father. He affirms to us when He said, As the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. So abide in my love. So my dear friends, abide in the love of Christ. Abide in Christ because He is 
our secret place. He is the secret place. The Lord Jesus said, If anyone loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Make the most high God your dwelling place. Paul tells us, and we know that all things work for the good of those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Therefore, for those who love God, He will work for the good, for they are called according to His purpose. What is the purpose? Jesus came to give life abundantly. For He said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be safe. He will go in and out and find pastures. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So, going into the refuge and find life. Go into Christ and find this abundant life. And then, come out and bring others who need this same refuge and bring them into Christ so that they too can share in this abundant life with you. That is our purpose. In closing, let me share with you a personal event. On the 25th of April, 2015, I was preaching in a Nepali service. While I was preaching, suddenly I heard a sound like wind coming from behind me, coming from afar. And then the ground that I stood upon begins to move, move upwards and sidewards and with great intensity. Chilling fear rushes up my spine from my feeble and weak feet. I was scared. I couldn't stand. And so I knelt down and I cried out to the Lord, O oh Lord, have mercy. It was the longest one minute in my life. It was a 7.9 magnitude earthquake that day. On the third day after the earthquake, I received a news that a C-130 from Singapore is coming to Kathmandu for an evacuation operations. So that night, Jacqueline and myself spoke to our three boys. I told them, would you boys like to return to Singapore? Your friend and his family are all returning back. You guys can go back with them and stay with Granny for about a few months. Mom and Dad will join you after we help to settle things here in Nepal. And boys turned and said to me, Dad, you said that home is where Mommy and Daddy is. We want to stay with you guys. We want to stay where home is. Don't send us away. And with tears in my eyes, I said, we will all remain. We will all remain behind as a family. I am proud of all of you. But mom and dad will need your help. We will need to serve the Nepali people. Would you serve together with us? Okay? And so that night, we hugged just outside the church toilet, and we prayed. In the following two months, while we stayed in the tents, the boys had found their refuge in the family. While Jack and I, as parents, we found our refuge in our God. Though it was a harsh living condition, they felt safe because they found their refuge and their fortress. In so doing, they are able to bring others to that same refuge as well. Here you look at the slide, is Kiran, my second son. He was 11 years old then. He was looking after a three-year-old boy whose mom was due to give birth any time during the earthquake 
In fact, the mom gave birth to her third child about two or three weeks after the earthquake. JJ, who was 14, he helped me with the food distribution to a village that was badly hit by the earthquake. These boys has found their refuge in their family whose refuge is their God. As they watched their parents' trust in God, they trusted in God as their refuge as well. Because they found that security in God, they are able to direct others to that same place in their small yet meaningful ways. In closing, and I will invite the worship team. In closing, and in this year of the tiger, I pray that you will indeed dwell in the secret place of the Most High, that you will abide in the shadow of Christ. And in doing so, you can come in and out of Christ, who is your gate, to draw others into that same refuge and that fortress, drawing others to our God in whom you have put your trust. And as we listen to this song, and I will invite Auntie Edna forward as well to take the center stage. And as Jia Zi sing this song, I'm not allowed to sing, so as Jia Zi sing this song, you are the Lord in whom I can trust. Let us reflect the Lion of Judah, whom we can hide, whom we can find shelter. Jiazi. in this year of the tiger may your spirit reminds us that you are that lion of Judah and yet you are that lamb of God who has been slain you laid your life because you love us first and because you first love us your unfailing love you have been faithful therefore we are able to love you and therefore, we ask that we will abide in you, abide in your love, abide in your shadow. You are our God. You are our refuge. You are our fortress in whom I can trust. And we pray that we will also follow you in going in and going out to call many lost sheep to find that refuge who is in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.